that is the second way you can lithify a rock. It's through cementation. And in the case of pressure solution, which happens you know, at greater depth, we see that we generate a cement that will lithify the rock. So the, the pressure itself dissolves the rock, but the dissolved limestone or dissolved minerals have a potential to precipitate as a cement. Now, there are other ways you can cement rock. So let's talk about cementation. So again, if you take a loose sediment, but you cement it with some new mineral phase, you lithify the rock. Now, that new mineral phase can be um, calcite or carbonates, very often it is, but that is not the only mineral phase you can precipitate in the subsurface. You can precipitate clays, you can precipitate quartz. So there's a, a whole range of minerals that can take part in that process of cementation. We will focus largely on carbonates because they are the most abundant cements, but keep in mind that you can have other types of cements as well. So diagenesis can happen in multiple environments. It can happen in the surface, it can happen in the marine environment, it can happen in burial. We've already talked a little bit about what happens in burial. Now let's look at marine sediments because the vast majority of sediments are actually marine sediments and they're deposited in an environment that is characterized by marine water and also a lot of wave agitation. So let's talk about the processes, the diagenetic processes that you can expect in such an environment. So this figure represents the marine environment and especially looking at carbonates in the marine environment because the marine environment is characterized by oversaturation in carbonate ions. So on the plot here, I have temperature on the left and I have the percent carbonate in the sediments on the right. And the temperature, you can see we have a nice red line representing the thermocline. So the surface ocean at zero, so the vertical axis is here um, depth versus the horizontal axis represents temperature. The surface ocean it can be quite warm in tropical and subtropical seas, but that temperature of the ocean drops as you go deeper in the water column. And you can see that the maximum water depth that we have on this plot is five kilometers, so pretty deep waters. And the percent carbonate in the sediment changes with respect to water temperature and the depths in the ocean. So the first zone that we recognize is a zone that is right above what is known as the aragonite lysocline. The lysocline is the point at which the precipitation of aragonite, in this case, is exceeded by the dissolution rate of aragonite. So above this, we have this zone one, which is a net, is a zone of net precipitation of aragonitic cement. So here we have a chance of precipitation of aragonite in tropical to subtropical warm zones. And that's really characteristic for this, this type of process. Now, if we go below this, we're below the aragonite lysocline, we have what is known as zone two, which is a zone at which point we are not precipitating aragonite. So we have a chance of dissolving aragonite, but we are still precipitating calcite. So we can have both dissolution and precipitation. So precipitation of a cement or dissolution of uh, carbonate minerals. And then finally, below this, we are below the calcite lysocline, which means, again, that the rate of precipitation of calcite is exceeded by the rate of dissolution of calcite. This is known as zone three. It's a zone of active dissolution. And finally, below the calcite compensation depths, we have zero precipitation of calcite and dissolution of calcite. Essentially, it's a zone of no carbonates. So you can see that the temperature of the water and where you are in a water column plays a great role in controlling diagenesis, at least for carbonate cements. And again, carbonate cements can happen in carbonate succession, but also in sandstone or classic succession. So don't think of carbonates as just for carbonate systems.